Lonely Monk Productions. Welcome to Too Old, Too New, the music discovery podcast that brings you something old, something new, something Nate, something yeah. Bruce. I'm Nate Runkle, host of the Yo, That's My John podcast, and with me, as always, is my good friend Bruce Warren from WXPN. Howdy. The premise of this show is simple. Each week, we bring you two songs apiece, one new song that has been metaphorically spinning our turntable platters, and one old song that we believe absolutely still matters going on my friend good work you are you're going on you are going on <laughs> I try. Uh, hey i heard you were at this podcast thing you went to a, a podcast conference of some sort i did i went to podcast movement and uh uh, uh it was down in dc uh it was a three-day thing i think i only went for one day i dro- drove down for it made a day trip of it and uh it, yeah, I, I learned i learned some stuff but i i, I gotta tell you like uh there is nothing more disheartening than being surrounded by a bunch of um uh, business types, because that's really what most of the people doing podcasts there are all people trying to sell something. Okay. So like everybody, yeah. everybody's like seminar started off like I was going to learn something and then turned into, and if you take my course, it's like, okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but we learned some new things there. I, I learned uh, uh, a lot uh, about uh, how you, uh, video and YouTube is kind of what's kind of dominating the conversation in podcasting right now. So if you see our, our, our uh, YouTube uh, output, uh, there's a, a new thing to it, new thumbnails. Um, All right, because that's they say, beautiful. They say faces, you need faces um, making dumb, dumb faces. And I have the dumbest face in the world, so we're in, we're in luck. <laughs> they were a good band. Um, <laughs> the, the, um, so, so any conversation around like the live podcasting ecosystem no, but you know, um, it's something that like they, they, so like all of those things were kind of recorded and all, and, and just the kind of like being able to do it and ha- and then have an audience to throw a Q and a to kind of right. gives a, a, like an interact, a more interactive feel to the podcast itself. Right. Um, yeah. so like it's, it, it feels like it's right. And like, you know, I, I, I think, I think it's uh, definitely something to, to, to see more of in the future. Well, I wasn't thinking about, uh, you know, my angle quite selfishly, Nate, was uh, possibly the two of us getting a fucking agent and uh, taking our show on the road. I'm ready. I'm ready. Right. Like uh, uh, the stage needs us. I think we would we would we would pack the house personally. Right. You could play a song in there a little. Right. We, we do a whole little entertainment thing. We figure it out. You know? I, I mean, like we could bring back the old uh, Martin and Lewis Road show. Okay, here we go. All right, it's a thought. Meanwhile, we're here to talk about a couple old jams and a couple new jams as we segue into the old portion today. That's a beautiful segue, my friend. I'll get started. Um, right. So uh, my my choice today, uh, I just got back from Colorado, and on the flight out there, um, I uh, uh, watched uh, uh, one of my favorite TV shows of all time, which is The Adventures of Pete and Pete. It's an old Nickelodeon show from the 90s <laughs> starring uh, Michael C. Morona uh, as the Big Pete and Danny Tamborelli as Little Pete. Shout out to Danny, who is actually a WXPN listener. Oh, um, all right. Yeah. yeah. All and right. a fan, and a fan. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, so uh, the the show was absolutely brilliant. It's about two brothers, and it's kind of surrealistic. And it had a lot of a lot of musical guest stars. Um, Iggy Pop played a character. Uh, David Johansson was in there. Uh, Marshall Crenshaw, uh, Sid Shaw, a bunch of people. Michael Stipe was in an episode. Kate Pearson from the B-52s. Um, but one of the things that I love most about The Adventures of Pete and Pete is the original soundtrack, which was by a band called Polaris, who was actually uh, Mark Mulcahy's Miracle Legion, just minus one member. So right. it was them set up as, as a trio. And the song I picked from that t- uh, today uh, is from my favorite episode of the show called Hard Day's Pete. And it's when little Pete uh, discovers that he has a favorite song because he, he, he never had a favorite song and he didn't understand it and he hated music. And then one day uh, he was late to school and he comes across this garage where there's this band playing and the band, surprisingly, is Polaris. Um, and they play this song, Summer Baby, and he becomes addicted to it, but he doesn't know the name of it and he doesn't know how to find it. So he starts his own band, The Blowholes, 
um, <laughs> with Marshall Crenshaw and Sid, Sid Shaw um, and uh, and recreates the song so that he can remember how the song goes um, and enjoy it. Uh, and it's just a beautiful love letter to music and, and, and finding your favorite song and loving it and then wanting to create something like that for other people to enjoy. Uh-huh. Um, it's incredible. And the song is called Summer Baby. And uh, let's listen to a little bit right now. If you see The brilliant jangly sounds of Mark Mulcahy. Oh. <laughs> and you know, it's interesting. First, great song. Uh, I, I was, you know, I was really, I was very, I was a huge fan of Miracle Legion uh, back in the day. And there isn't enough reverence for Miracle Legion. And I think, you know, you use the word jangly. And I think about like when I first started at XB and I was a volunteer DJ and I was on overnight. And when Miracle Legion's EP came out, the first EP, The Backyard, it was like, it was reduced to like, oh, they sound too much like jangly REM or you really got into the backyard, which was a, a, which was an amazing EP. Um, but they kind of, you know, Mark Mulcahy is an unbelievable um, singer and songwriter. And I, you know, I'm glad you kind of brought his name up because I don't think like looking back, I don't think that um, Mark uh, and their work, Miracle Legion's work, gets enough credit very underrated without a doubt for sure for sure you know? i'll give you two things that i don't know if you know about one he released uh two eps this year um one of them the tinsler volume one is him doing covers and he covers adrian lanker and he covers mitski and it's incredible him doing my love mine all mine is absolutely a banger um, wow. and very easily could have been my new but wow. I didn't. Um, and the other thing i only found this out today i didn't know about it i don't know if you knew about it 2017, I think, there's a tribute album that was released to Mark Mulcahy. I'm with familiar like, with it. Yeah. With the National doing Ashamed of the Story I Told, which is a Polaris song. Tom York's on there, Michael Stipe. Mm-hmm. I listened to it for the first time today, and I was blown away that mm-hmm. somehow I missed it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, good choice. Really good, great choice, great choice. What do you, what do you got for Something Old this well, week? Well, you know, it's funny because, like, my Something Old, which is a song called Will You Stay Tonight by the... British band Comsat Angels kind of comes around from around. It was released around the same time, I think, a little bit later for Polaris. Um, but hey, listen, you know, um, England has always, you know, um, delivered some unbelievable musical bands. Um, so, Nate, you know, when you think of great music scenes in England, what comes to mind? Well, it's, it's got to be uh, like Manchester. Right. And, yeah. Manchester, right? Liverpool, right? Sure. Over the years. But did you know that over the years, Sheffield, England has produced some of the great, great rock and roll bands? Did I did you know? not. I did okay. not. Let me give you a list here of bands from Sheffield, England. All right. Ever hear of Human League? Hell yes. Pulp? Yes. Arctic Monkeys? Oh, of course. Did you know that Death Fucking Leopard were from Sheffield? I did not. That's incredible. Yeah, that's a that's a banger of a town. Okay. Did you know that the Thompson Twins were from Sheffield? I did not. There you go. I, I got I got my research all fucking lined up here. Anyway, the Comsod Angels also were from Sheffield. And they were, I guess, you know, they came around, I guess, the late 1979. They released their debut um, that year. Um, in 1982, like so, their first the first name of the band is Comsat, C O M S A T, and some of you may recognize that name, that word, as being sort of related to a communications company. And in 1982, they were actually sued by the it was the company here in the uh, in the states. They were called the Communications Satellite Corporation to stop using the name Comsat, even though the band took their name from a, a short story that was written by J.G. Ballard. But their debut album sort of like 
a lot of people who sort of grew up in that era of new wave, post-punk, when it was just starting to happen, like this was the band that was supposed to sort of fill in the gap that was closed by Joy Division because there's a there's a ominous feel to it, but still very melodic, still very dark. And this song was always one of their my favorite songs by them. Not their biggest, most well known song, uh, but let's listen to it right now. It's called Will You Stay Tonight? And it's by the Comsat Angels. So both, you know, the roots of uh, You're Something Old Today, Polaris, started in the early 80s. And the roots of My Something Old Today started in the late 70s, early 80s. So there's definitely a, a nice little overlap there. That's uh, Comsat Angels with Will You Stay Tonight. Very nice. And the, the guitar tone. Absolutely yeah. just killer. Yeah. Just, now, just to... I will point out also, um, um, I know you wrote this down in your notes. But uh, there's very little Compsat Angels music available on any of the streaming services, but almost all their stuff is up on YouTube. On so YouTube, yes. Check it out. Very cool. All very right. cool. Uh, for, for something new, um, uh, I mentioned that I was in Colorado. I was in Colorado for the Brandy Carlisle show at Red Rocks um, uh, featuring the Colorado Symphony Orchestra. Um, and it was without a doubt one of the most amazing shows I've ever experienced in my life. And so I definitely wanted to come with something. Um, but, you know, Brandy, uh, while she said she's about to uh, start working on the next album, didn't really have a new song. I had thought about doing um, the uh, duet she did with uh, Hosier. Right. Um, which is one of my uh, contenders for song of the year. It absolutely blows my mind how phenomenal that song is. Um, but I wanted to showcase um, a, a portion of Brandy Carlisle that I feel like uh, is somewhat underrated, and that's the Hansroth twins. Uh, you know, uh, Phil and Tim Hansroth, who uh, are, are a part of the triumvirate that gives you what we all love about Brandy Carlisle. Um, and they released an album this year called Vera. Um, it's, it's, it's them. It's, it's all them. And, uh, it, it's absolutely incredible. Um, they, I, I read a little bit about how the project came about, which was they tracked Remember Me, uh, which was the lead single off of it. And actually they performed it with the Colorado Symphony Orchestra. I'll never be able to listen to it again and have it be as amazing as that. But anyway, uh, so they tracked Remember Me. They sent it to, uh, Greg Nadel. Uh, the at Electra, the A and R guy, and within 15 minutes, he called them back and said, "Can you get us an album in a month? We want to release this in the summer." Uh, and so they, you know, fast tracked the album um, and put it together. Um, it's absolutely incredible. And the song that I picked today is "I'll Always Know I Do," um, because Brandy's singing background on it, uh, production credits. Dave McKay plays organ on it, who was also there performing a, as a guest of Brandy. And it's just a beautiful song. So let me hit a little I'll Always Know, I'll Always Know I Do by the Hans Roth Twins. And I may not remember how I know you But I'll always know somehow that I do I might struggle for the words but someplace Deep inside, I'll know the truth. I might think that you're a friend from a long time ago. Though we're all only strangers passing through. I may not remember why I love you, but I'll always know why. God Beautiful. damn, that blood harmony is so good, isn't Beautiful. it? Like, Beautiful. But man, what an album! And and again, like they opened they opened the show, um, and uh, just sounded absolutely incredible. One of the things I'll also point out that people should check out is um, uh, uh, they do a cover of Erasure's uh, "Little Respect" that is absolutely incredible. So definitely take a look at that. Yeah, it's a great record, and I love those guys. Phil and Tim are the best. Um, I, I know they're really hard to tell apart, um, but if you've ever 
see, so first of all, you know, they're always in the same position when you're looking at the stage when they're playing. And when you see them and meet them outside of a concert, they also stand the same way. They never switch <laughs> places. And that's how I know. Um, well, occasionally they do, but that's how I can tell the difference between two of them. Between who's who. So if, real funny story about twins real quick is I went to high school with these two twins, Amy and Jamie Butler. And Amy and I were always friends and Jamie was cool too or whatever. And we graduated one day and I was out at a bar and I was hanging out and one of them was there and we're drinking. And she goes, uh, do you know which one I am? And I go, of course I do. You're Amy. And she goes, how do you know I'm Amy? And I said, because Jamie was always a bitch to me. Oh. And uh, uh, guess who it was? It was Jamie. I was oh wrong. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, man. Boom. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'm not great at telling twins you got apart the, is what the, I'm getting at. The, 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 you got the pie in the face, man. Eating, <laughs> eating, eating the pie. Exactly. Eating the pie. Eating the pie. Uh, so what kind of new stuff you got well, for us today? But, but let me stay with the hands. Oh, let yeah. me stay with Phil and Tim for a second. You know why I love this record? I, 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 I've listened to it a lot. You know, I'm, I'm, I, yeah, I grew up in the 70s. I'm a sucker for the Laurel Canyon sound, the singer-songwriter thing. Um, it's part of my, you know, DNA. And um, I know for a fact that Brandy and the Twins are huge fans of the band Bread. Do you remember the band Bread? For sure, yeah. Right? You know, I want to make it with you. Like, you know, those soft pop, great harmonies. And they're also uh, big fans of um, um, the Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, uh, oh, Gordon Lightfoot. Gordon Lightfoot. Gordon yeah. Lightfoot. And, you know, I hear like elements of all that stuff in their music, but they, they you know, they, they don't, they wear their influences on their sleeves, but they turn it into really fresh sounding songs. And that's why I love this record so much. It's just, it's a, it's just a beautiful record uh, in the genre, you know. For sure, definitely. I'm actually kind of shocked that like people aren't talking about it more, to be honest. Yeah. Because like it is, yeah. it is incredibly strong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna go completely in an opposite direction here. Um, <laughs> last week, uh, the subject of a new band came up in the XPN offices called The Dare. And I was familiar with the girls, like their first big song. Um, but someone um, said, like, ah, you know, they want to be too much like Oasis. And I was like, what do you mean? They, I, don't, I don't remember the Oasis touch, touch points, right? I don't remember that. So I decided to go and actually listen to the full album. Um, it's called um, What's Wrong with New York? That's the name of the, the D.A.R.E. album, D-A-R-E. The D.A.R.E. is actually one person, a guy named Harrison Patrick Smith from Los Angeles. Um, and I will tell you that their album is the best 27-minute album I have heard this year. And, like, I, I want to bring that up. And it might actually be one of my favorite albums of the year so far. The reason why I bring up the fact that it's 27 minutes, 10 songs, 27 minutes, is that before you know it, you're in and out and you just want to listen to it again. And when I listened, put it on last weekend, I listened to the album three times in a row and it was, it just blew my mind. Um, what is it, The Dare, if you're not familiar? Well, I guess I want to say it's sort of like a, a, a blending of like electro pop and rock and roll. Um, it's, it's this weird melding I will use the R I Y L lang lingo here. Um, it's this weird melding of like LCD sound system and the strokes. And, you know, there's a new band called Yard Act that sort of like Harrison does this singy, spoken wordy thing. But they also, in a really weird way, remind me of Cake. There's a lot of attitude, there's very tight grooves, there's a lot of snark. There's a lot of boasting and a lot of arrogance, and I fucking love it, right? I fucking love it. So let's check this song out. Um, it's uh, called I Destroyed Disco. Punk rock to disco, missiles blowing up the motherfucking club from New York to San Francisco. It goes with me wherever I wanna. Blow my head off on the search for Nirvana. I destroyed disco. He 
wants to destroy Disco. That is the dare, and I destroyed Disco. And you know what? Not only do I hear elements of cake, which is, you know, kind of weird, but I also, I, I, you know, if I could ever clean this song up, if they ever uh, give me a, a version of this that I could actually play on the radio, I'm going to segue in, into Looking for the Perfect Beat by Africa Bambada and Soul wow. Sonic Force. So there you go. It's got that New York fucking electro funk whatever the fuck you want to call it thing so going on and i am just in love with this record i immediately wrote down in my list of uh, this album to check out uh because i missed it i didn't i didn't know it came out this week and when you sent this song through i was like i definitely got to check it out and then now that you're telling me it's only 27 minutes long that's like that's like a gift to me because that's a, that's about how long my attention lasts <laughs> before i start looking at squirrels um but man what a rip this is just a this is and if you need a clean version i i might be able to bust out my serato and clean one up for you all right okay i may take <laughs> you up on that good stuff can, good stuff good it's, stuff it's it's awesome these songs of course will be on the playlist on spotify you can check them all out um also check out the youtube channel as we are trying to get the videos up i'm still missing episode 18 and i don't know why uh the video is sitting on my hard drive i just gotta edit it um but uh but er everything's up to date on there um of course you can always follow us on the socials i'm at yo that's my john on everything bruce is at some velvet blog on everything you can hear bruce every saturday from 10 a.m to 2 p.m on wxpn you can hear me normally on why not radio on mondays from five to eight and also the yo that's my john podcast which is up every other week and this week, if you are in the Phoenixville area, Friday, uh, whatever that date is, the 13th. Oh, Friday, Friday the, 13th. the 13th. Hey, uh -oh. uh, Friday the 13th. If you're in the Phoenixville area, I will be playing at Harris Hill Brewery, um, which is my first gig in over a month. So All right. uh, we'll see how that goes um, from six to nine. So that, that'll that that'll be a little bit of fun. Um, of course, you know, thank you guys uh, for following, uh, liking, subscribing, doing all of that cool stuff uh, that you do. And uh, we love we love bringing you some music. So I'm glad you guys are enjoying it. And Bruce, man, what another we did it again. We were just we're we're so good at this. But I'm telling you, man. Well, where's that agent? I, I, well, let's get that agent. Come we on. We got to get that road show. We got to, we got to talk to whoever the Kelsey's agent is. <laughs> we could be the next Kelsey's. That's it. Uh, nah, probably not, but that's okay. Probably not. That's right. It's we, something, we, goals, man, goals. You need fucking goals, right? That's exactly right. That's exactly, exactly right. All right well, man. again, I will Peace. catch you next time. Yeah. Too Old, Too New with Nate and Bruce is a Lonely Monk production produced and hosted by Nate Runkle and Bruce Warren. Please be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the show on your podcast provider of choice. If you have any music you think we should hear, or if you would just like to reach out to us, please feel free to email us at tooldtoonewmusicpod at gmail.com. And as always, thanks, and we... We'll catch you next time. Yeah.